There is one super technique that I use above all others to get stunning looking blue hour photographs. It's a technique that many of you already know. It's not difficult, it's not particularly technical, but very few apply this technique to the blue hour. Now, if you watch this video all the way through, I'm going to reveal exactly what that technique is. You are now watching video three in this series. If you've not already done so, make sure you check out videos one and two. There's some very important information in both. In the first video, we looked at how the fixed photographic rules and techniques can often lead to disappointing results. In video two, I gave away a secret tip for quick and easy results when shooting the blue hour. Check it out to get a head start in the beautiful blue hour. Take a look at this image. It looks stunning, doesn't it? Beautiful deep blue twilight contrasted with the multi-bright colors of the city lights. Images like this can be tricky because of the extreme contrast between the bright lights and the inky blue sky. It's called an extreme dynamic range and our cameras struggle to cope with it. Now, one of two of you might have heard of a technique to deal with this. It's called high dynamic range photography or HDR. Done badly, it can look awful. Done well, it can look stunning. Applied to the blue hour, it can make the mundane look magical. Today, I'm going to show you the basic concepts of HDR photography as they apply to blue hour. The idea behind HDR is to shoot a range of exposures around the metered exposure. For example, one with perfect exposure, another underexposed, and one other overexposed, which can then be combined to create more dynamic range in the final shot. I have found that the sweet spot for blue hour photography is five exposures, each between two thirds and one stop apart. There are two ways we can achieve that. Let the camera do the work or set it manually. I'm going to show you both. To try this in the blue hour, set up your camera as suggested in video two. Let's start with automatic bracketing. Depending on your camera, you will be able to access the bracketing setup through the menu system. If your camera allows it, set the bracket to five images at two thirds of a stop difference. Not all cameras will be able to do this. If yours cannot do two thirds of a stop, set it to a one stop difference. With your camera set up in aperture priority and on a tripod and set to bracketing, take your shot. Your camera should rapidly shoot five images, changing the shutter speed for each one. It's that simple. If your camera does not have auto bracketing or you want to be a little more hands on, we can do the bracket manually. Again, we will set up the camera as we did in video two with our exposure mode set to aperture priority and matrix metering. We are going to employ another little trick that we learnt in video two, exposure compensation. When shooting in aperture priority, if we simply change the aperture, the exposure will remain the same and we will get five identical images. If however, we use exposure compensation as we change the compensation setting, the camera will adjust the exposure. With the shot set up, dial minus four notches of exposure compensation. Depending on your camera, this will either be minus one and a half stops or minus two stops underexposed. Take the shot, then move the compensation dial plus two notches. Take the shot, then plus two notches again, and take the shot. Now, if you have a good head for exposure, you will realize that we are now at the correct metered exposure, but we're not going to stop there. We repeat the same move twice more to give us two overexposed shots, giving us a five shot bracket ready to be merged in post-production. Most of my post-production is done in Lightroom with some additional work in Photoshop if needed. Let's take a quick look at how to merge our five shot bracket in Lightroom. Having decided on the best shot to use, select all five images by using command or control and clicking each. Right click on one of the selected images and then go to Photo Merge HDR. As we shot on a tripod, we can leave auto align off, but we need to keep auto settings on. DGhost will attempt to remove people and other objects that have moved during the five shot bracket. You can see what will be affected by clicking Show DGhost Overlay. 
you will need to practice a little with decos to see exactly what works best. When happy, click on Merge. Lightroom will then run the calculations and when finished, add the merged file to your folder. If you've been shooting RAW, that merged file will be an Adobe DNG RAW file, giving you a very wide dynamic range. Once you've merged the images, you can start to make them shine. In my upcoming course, Shooting the Blues, I will go into more detail about my editing processes, from importing the image to getting stunning blue hour shots. Bracketing is a keystone of my Shooting the Blues process, and I am sharing it with you so that you can get some practice with it. I want you to take your camera out, shooting both the automatic bracket and the manual bracket. It does not have to be blue hour, and you don't even need to use a tripod. Just take the camera out and familiarise yourself with the bracketing technique. Remember, blue hour happens fast and you need to work fast. Understand this key technique thoroughly. In my upcoming course, Shooting the Blues, I will show you exactly how bracketing fits into the grand scheme of my blue hour process. Although I have given you the big secret, there are lots of little steps needed to make your blue hours stand out. The course is going to launch in a very short while, so make sure that you look out for it. In the next video, I'm going to show you all the techniques we need to take amazing blue hour photos. I will literally list every step that I go through when creating a blue hour shot. Make sure that you stay tuned in for that, you won't want to miss it. I hope that you found this video useful. If you have any questions, please don't hesitate to get in touch. My name is Jason Rowe and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.